everyone. Um, I will be talking like this because I am manually using my lungs right now since my asthma is acting up and since May is asthma and allergy awareness month, um, I figured I'd make a video to show you how to use a nebulizer if you don't know how to use one or you don't own one. And if you do have asthma, I would highly recommend getting one because <laughs> it's literally a lifesaver and it kind of eliminates the whole stress and um, bills from going to the hospital because they're going to give you the same thing. Anyways, they're really not that expensive or as expensive as you would think since it's like a machine. Um, but they usually range from like 30 to 40 dollars and um the medication that i use for it is um like, it's albuterol sulfate and it looks like this and depending on how bad your asthma is you can either do one treatment or however many you need i'm probably going to use one for right now and see how that works out usually it's enough and I'm pretty sure everyone's yelling at me to stop talking and actually take my medicine and then talk and explain. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, probably not. Anyways, um, the machine that I have is a McKesson Interest Performance. One it's very small, convenient. I wouldn't say carry it around in your purse wherever you need, that's why you have an inhaler. But my inhaler expired and I didn't really know. So it wasn't working as well as it should have. You kind of have to put it together. Uh, you plug it in and it has a clear cord which you attach to something that looks like this. And you would pour your solution into, I'm getting a headache right now. <coughs> um, you would pour your solution into this and attach it to either a mask or another piece that you hold in your mouth, but I like to use a mask because I don't feel like holding anything because I'm lazy. Um, and you turn it on and it turns into um, vape. I don't, I don't know what it's called. <coughs> and you just breathe until it's finished and depending on how much you need. Um, Sometimes it will make your body feel different at, at the end. Usually my body feels really shaky afterwards, but it wears off in like 20 minutes or so and you should be good for a while. So yeah, I'm gonna get started. <coughs> if I can open this thing. So the amount that's in this one is 0.021% or uh, 3 milliliters of albuterol sulfate and I just pour it in here and you close it and you attach it. My husband always laughs at me and he calls me Bane whenever I put this on. But I'm, I don't use it. And you just turn it on. It's pretty loud. And, um, it tastes terrible. I don't even know what it is. It's like, like tear water mixed with like, I don't know. It just tastes like medicine. And you can sit here for maybe, um, like, maybe 10 minutes. It takes to go all the way out and, um, I'm not sure how much you would need to use it. Some people use it every day. I've been. But, um, 
It's only because there's been a lot of outside things that trigger my asthma. And I have to literally go through everything in this apartment right now to um, clean and dust and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. I don't, I don't even know if you can hear anything about this right now. Probably not. Okay. But I am bored. I actually do need to <coughs> see treatment. So, I'll stay here for a few more minutes. That's my nose itch. Okay, we are. I'm not really tired, but I'm actually pretty cold in here. So, I think I'm going to go to sleep after this. Sometimes it splashes in your nose and it can get really messy but um now I can actually breathe <laughs> okay and um, that's basically all you need to do really and you're well again unless you're still sitting in whatever is triggering your asthma but like I said before if you do not have one you should definitely invest in one if you do have asthma because it does make the difference. I've only like had a serious asthma attack that I would I like needed to go to the hospital. I had it twice. Once when I was like five ish and the second time was a few years ago when I went to visit family in Florida and it was rough. But I only went to the hospital the second time because the issue is, like, your body does change and um, my asthma did evolve and it actually has gotten worse than what it was before because it was, I guess, pretty bad when I was, like, younger, but then it kind of stopped and I wouldn't say it went away, but I had no need or any medication or anything like sometimes I'll have like mini asthma flare-ups but it wasn't anything I couldn't handle and then it would go away and that would usually be triggered from like running or like anything that put strain on my lungs and I was typically okay I guess now since I'm older and my body has changed when I went to visit family the air is a lot thicker than from where I live and it triggered my asthma instantly. I mean, it was changing before then, but when you go to the doctors, they can't prescribe you something, you know, based off of your word. So like when I did go to school and I was under my school insurance, um, I told them that I did have asthma and I did actually need medication, but they couldn't do anything because there, there was no proof. So I would basically have to wait until I had an asthma attack to go to them to say look I have asthma and generally what it always happened was I would get an asthma attack when I'm home like at night and by the time I get to you know the doctor's office it would be over and then can't prove anything so I basically had to wait until I was at that point to go to the hospital to actually get documentation to say I have asthma so give me a prescription <laughs> kind of thing but once you get all of those complications and stuff out the way and you have your medication, keep it with you. Even though I don't ever, and I should. But the medicine that I do really use, because I, I don't use the inhaler that much, I try not to because you don't want your body to get so used to the medication that it stops working. And sometimes it feels like it's doing that now since I've been taking it so much. I usually use the um, purple round thing. What's that called? Advair? I think it's Advair. But I would use that every day and I'd be fine. But I ran out of that and then 
um, we had my inhaler and then my inhaler expired so I only have the nebulizer so that's what I'm using now until I can get another prescription and get refills on my medication and stuff but yeah um, there has been times in a couple of my videos that I was having really bad asthma like while I was dancing but you know me I do like to push myself and I know what my body can handle and what it can't handle and um, I would just kind of chuck through it. Uh, one video I remember I was not breathing at all and you probably can tell if you go back to look at it but it was the I don't even know how you pronounce her name is it Tara Tara whatever the roly-poly um, dance cover like I was not breathing at all so I just sat there with a smile on my face but you can I guess if you're paying attention you can kind of tell I was struggling and what are the other ones I was having bad asthma and I wasn't really breathing in my Carrie Pamu Pamu the candy candy video and the Michael Jackson thriller one like those ones I was like dying to finish it so I can actually take my medication but um I wouldn't suggest pushing your body to to that point unless you can handle it and unless you have the right things you need to make yourself better and I didn't then so I probably shouldn't have when I did begin dancing and I started my channel um, the thing is okay I've been dancing since I was like three till like 17 and then I stopped for like eight years because I just I hated dancing, but I loved dancing. Like, I like dancing, but I hate dance class. And um, because I stopped for so long, I basically had to retrain my body and my lungs and rebuild my stamina and all of that. So I would have to take, like, baby steps. And so over time, I've kind of took it inch by inch and did more strenuous work and movements and actions and stuff to like rebuild um, my lungs back to the way it was before and I'm getting there for the most part uh, I'm not there just yet but almost so um, that's basically and I'm just kind of blabbing now just because I feel like talking and I haven't actually talked to you guys in a while just to talk so, um, yeah, <laughs> if you have asthma, <laughs> I feel for you. <laughs> I know a lot of things trigger it for me personally. I'm allergic to dust and pets and stuff, and that's all I was around the entire week, which is why it was just like crazy. And now since I'm back home, I have to basically re-clean everything since... I guess this place collects a lot of dust pretty fast, so it flares my asthma. And if it's too cold outside, my asthma will react. If it's too hot, it'll react. Too humid, it'll react, and then I'll get water in my lungs, and then it'll just be miserable. If I laugh too hard, I'll get asthma. If I run too much, I get asthma. It's it's really sensitive and annoying, which is why most of the time I ignore it, and I can just keep going until I can't and then that's when I take action but yeah that's asthma for you so <laughs> if you didn't know and this taught you anything I don't know <laughs> um, but yeah I guess have a wonderful night morning evening or afternoon whenever you're watching and I'll see you guys very soon so bye